What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up. And today, I want to give you guys what you've been asking for. And that's the Marvion Overshone linebacker who played lights out in his rookie debut versus the Cleveland Browns. Now, I wasn't going to drop this video, to be honest with you. But we just reached 16,000 subscribers. And everyone in the group and also on Instagram was like, yo, Tuck, I don't care if there's other film breakdowns on O. I want to hear your take. So let's go ahead and get into the film, man. So the very first thing that jumps off the screen when it comes to Overshone is his just ability to go out there and make plays. At the linebacker position, we always talk about see, react, and hit. That is exactly what DeMarvin Overshone is. He sees it, he reacts quickly, and he's not afraid to hit. And that's going to be demonstrated all across this film. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, overall, he had 39 defensive snaps. And I think the thing that I found the most intriguing was he also played a lot as an inside linebacker. He wasn't necessarily just used as an outside guy. So they played him on the inside, middle linebacker, and also some Sam as well. So I think I love the way that Zim is using him because now we have linebackers with safety traits. Because remember, at Texas, he was a safety he played safety at Texas. They converted him to linebacker. He put on some exercise last year after um, the ACL injury. And man, it's showing all over already in week one. So his very first play is showing his support in the run game, right? So he's patient, right? Because he didn't jump down and come downhill on four. He's seen it, seen it, seen it, right? Now, if he would have dove down trying to play some hero ball, then maybe he misses out on this play action. But he's patient. Deshaun Watson pulls it. Hits forward on this underneath route. And watch how quickly he sees and comes downhill. Bam. On it. Secure the tackle. Now, when we did our draft study on him, and this was a guy that we, when we did our draft study, we told y'all, circle DeMarvin Overshone. The Cowboys are high on him. It's going to happen to the moment, even calling out the pick in the third round. But the one thing I will say about him at the University of Texas is he missed a lot of tackles, right? His talk tackle miss percentage was extremely high at, at Texas, but it seems like just week one, that has been cleaned up and he is taking ball carriers down the ground. And you see just that closing speed, how he's able to go out there and handle things already at the NFL level. Now this play, I will play at full speed because this was golly. Now the very first thing that stands out, right? So you'll see Zim using that double A gap mug to show, right? So he has everyone lined up on the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's showing that everyone's coming. So for Deshaun Watson standpoint, or for quarterbacks who don't know how to understand blitzes, what does this look like? It looks like everyone is coming and you'll even see it. The center point. Now he's making a slide protection. But Zim says, nah, bro, we're just playing with you. We're going to drop our linebackers back. The linebackers are going to drop back right here. Bang. And you'll see Overshone, right? So now they already met this slide protects. But now the play clock is, is, is cooking. You got to go. You know, even though they're in shotgun, right? So on this play right here, it just shows the godliness ability of Demari and Overshone. Like, I jumped out of my seat, y'all, when I was watching this play. Because remember, he's a 4-5 or five guy. So he's not a slow linebacker. He is a 4-5 or five guy. I think he ran like a 4-5, or five, 6 or so. But to be able to spy Deshaun Watson out of the pocket and say, you know what? I'm on it. I am on it. Like, the closing speed, the way that he was able to cover ground, y'all. Look how much ground he covered on this play. I could just... It was just my goodness, man. Like, <laughs> it, like it, here's the crazy part, right? You have a lion right here in Micah Parsons, and I thought Micah was going to make the play. Overshawn said, no, bro, I am on it. I am on it. So now what Cowboys fans should really be excited about is you can combine the speed of Micah Parsons and Overshawn, and now it's revved up. Because before the game, I was saying, listen, you know, I don't want to skip ahead, and we'll talk about that when it comes. But when we play the Baltimore Ravens, maybe you put Micah to spy Le Lamar Jackson. No, we don't have to now because we have this guy that can spy Lamar Jackson and hunt him down as well. And, man, this play, I love this play. I cannot say this enough. I, I've I talked about it a thousand times on my Instagram, at jtuck151. I still don't know how he did it. <laughs> I honestly just don't. It's just one of those things like that's just God-given ability, and you cannot coach that. 
on this play right here, it shows some of that versatility, right? To be able to turn his hips, right? Drop in coverage, like I said, those safety traits. So he's able to bail out, you know, get in those underneath zones. But once he's able to, bam, he's able to close in on David Njoku and again, and make the tackle. So what really, um, that trait really helps with y'all because we didn't rush. We didn't blitz a lot under Zim, right? And they really, really need to because we got pressure with four. So when you're able to just rush with four, one, two, three, four, and drop in coverage, honestly, this has been the thing that's been kicking the Dallas Cowboys ass for quite some time. But you're able to rush with four and drop in zone. But not only are you able to drop in zone, when you drop in zone, you have guys like a Kalen Carson who we talked about yesterday, but also DeMarvin Overshone who can close it, right? Because when zone, you want to keep everything underneath Right. But you don't want him to be able to catch and break this for even, uh, you know, yards after the catch. Right. As soon as he catches, you're closing in on it and it shows the ability to Marvin Overshone. So when we're sitting in those soft zones, whether it's a cover two or a cover three or whatever underneath, that demo can definitely shut that down and close in to make a five yard gain, a five yard gain and not let them move the chains. On this play, a little bit of the versatility, right? So he's going to be lined up. They're going to have Jerry Judy actually in the backfield. He's going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one with Judy, which is no easy task. That's their speedy guy. That's their burner. Now, even though Judy's able to make the catch, right, he's able to kind of stick with them and still close in once again and push him out of bounds for the short game, right? So it shows the versatility. Now, he's not a guy that you would probably want covering deep down the field, but zone underneath, you know, quick out route, swing plays with running backs, all that kind of stuff, you can definitely do that. And what that really helps with is for Dan Quinn last year, he had to kind of use Marquise Bell in this capacity. Now, I love Marquise Bell. Y'all know that I do. But he's small. He's only like 206 compared to 220. So you have a much bigger pause if you want to. Marquise Bell, that can go out there and give you some of those qualities on a Sunday. Once again, just showing the zone and it's being able to come down, close and secure the tackle on four. So like I said, he is very C. So he sees it right here. One sees it. Okay. There's my guy running back. I see it. I'm reacting. And then now I'm going to hit and secure it. Right. Cause think about it. If he missed, if he misses this tackle, right, he misses this tackle. There's a lot of different green now, granted, you know, Kendricks or maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, Diggs or, you know, Donald could have come down and close on it. But those are extra yards that's allowed him to make a first first down. But since Demo is so high motor, he's able to come downhill, close on it and keep it for a short yardage gain. And this is what I was also saying in other videos about our linebacker core, right? Having a guy like Demo at the second level changes everything because you have a guy that can scrape, get through this garbage with the center, stay disengaged, and still close in and get in on the action, right? Y'all know our motto, right? For defenders, where do you make your money? At the ball carry, right? The ball's where the money is at, and you see that Demo is able just to stay high motor and still get on the play and make the tackle. So I think this definitely helps our run game. Um, run defense, right? So you'll see him once again. He's lined up here. Just another run defense. C react hit. He's going to come in motion. He's going to secure the outside, right? So he has this outside guy because he had this, this wide receiver, I believe, coming in motion, coming across. You want to keep the outside contained. All right. So you see that he's going to bend this inside between the guard and this tackle. I'm closing in and I'm on it. Good play from D. Marcus Overshone. Overshone, man. I love this kid, man. The only thing that I hate is that he's wearing 13 and not zero, but I got a trick for that. Uh, but, man, this kid is outstanding. Now, bang. Look at that read and react. Good effort. Good motor. Y'all know motor is my thing. That's what gets Jay Tuck excited is motor, 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 motor. Now, this isn't just a highlight channel, right? So it's going to be coaching moments. And it's not necessarily a knock on Overshone. This is not his fault. This is the law of power, right? Law of physics, right? But the one thing that you don't want to allow with him or just any linebacker, especially with Overshown, I would say this is what really killed us versus, you know, last year versus Green Bay and versus Buffalo and those games having lighter running or linebackers. You don't want to let these tackles and these guards and these tight ends get up to the second level to be able to double team because just by the size difference, 
they're going to be able to punish him right now. He's able to kind of battle, right? He's a dog. He's going to fight through it. But overall, this is not what you want, right? Because you get these guys get up on him. They're going to be able to move him out the picture. You want to keep DeMarvin Overshone clean because you don't want this because once teams pick on this, they'll start trying to locate him, double team. But I think that with Zim's scheme, you won't see that frequently. Now, this is a bonus clip, even though Overshone is included. I posted this clip on Twitter and I want to talk you guys through it. What I think is going to help this Dallas Cowboys defense tremendously is that Coach Zimmer is going to marry scheme and the talent versus I think last year, Dan Quinn was like, I got the talent, just go out there and just use your God given ability. But now Coach Zimmer is going to put the players in the most optimal positions to use their God given a talent. So you'll see this play right here. You'll have him and Vigil lined up in these B gaps. So what is this doing, right? It's putting stress on the offensive line to do their slide protects, right? So you'll see it right here. If you play in slow-mo, that's why you get the details. Which way are we going? We are going towards the line, right? We're pointing that we're gonna slide protect and slide towards the line, right? So what does that do when you have these two linebackers in the B gap? You get one-on-one -on -one here, 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 and you're going to leave Demarcus Lawrence unblocked it, right? But this goes to the important piece that Zim really talked about and the players talked about all offseason is just doing your job and trusting your teammates. This isn't sexy. This is not going to show up in Overshone's stat sheet. But bam, he comes off the line of scrimmage and he's engaging this tackle, right? So that allows him to be fully engaged with this tackle and allows Demarcus Lawrence to flow freely. On the other side right here, Micah Parsons all offseason, you heard you're a one-trick pony. You're only helping the pass game and the run game. You're not efficient. Well, look at Micah Parsons over here. Arm extended, outside arm free, sealing this edge so Ford cannot bounce on the outside. But, yo, we did his video the other day. But watch Marshawn Nealon with this push on this center at full speed. Lapped him. Lapped him, lapped him, lapped him. So Marshawn Nealon is pushing the center all the way in the backfield, forcing Jerome Ford to cut back. Okay, cut back. Congratulations. There's a beast in Demarcus Lawrence that you're going to run into, and that's going to be a serious problem every time, man. So this was a good film clip to show everyone doing their job, not playing hero ball. And if you do that, trust your teammates, and things will change for this defense, man. So it's your boy, Jay Tuck. Comment, like, subscribe. If you love film breakdown, you're in the right spot. Man, turn on that notification bell. Thank you once again for 16,000. But DeMarvin Overshone, listen, Cowboys Nation, I know it's only week one, but I told you last offseason in the draft, this kid will be a star, and every Cowboys fan should be excited that he is on our roster. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and Jerry Jones, give him number zero, please. Peace.